Welcome back to the channel. We are doing a new project today. A little bit of art for you guys. That's what we're going to be turning into stained glass. So I'm super excited about it. Uh, this is coming from Track 7 Brewing Company. If you remember from last time we did our first beer panel with them. First thing we want to do is get this picture blown up. Also, I've already pre-selected all the glass that we need. We are missing some of the colors. I will need to go to stained glass garden. So let's go over to the print first and then we'll do the stained glass shop. All right, we got the copy, let's get some glass. Ended up just walking up with way more stuff than we needed. So here's the game plan. We've got our print copy, it's 18 by 18 inches. I started out by laying out the pattern to the workboard so we can build everything on top of that. But first, the big thing we gotta do is cut some zinc came to size. I thought the back saw would be good enough for a few cuts, but couldn't seem to mount the miter box just right with those terrible clamps. So, let's just do it the fast and easy way. Now we have the left and bottom borders and taping the pattern down exactly how it's supposed to lay out. And let's hammer those zinc in place. Now time to cut some glass. And a little bit of grinding to get it to fit just right. And now we get to cut all the pieces to shape. So now that we have our glass cut, it's time to cut some lead strips. But first, we gotta stretch them out a bit to stiffen them up. I thought that was the perfect spot, but it almost pulled out my entire countertop. So off it goes to a new mounting spot. The process of assembling lead came into the project is basically cutting the lead came strips to the correct size and fitting glass into the lead channels. It's not a difficult process, but it is definitely going to take the longest time here, at least in my case. I'm using a combination of a lead knife and a diagonal cutter to trim the ends of the lead came strips to matching angles and joints wherever they join together. At the same time, if the glass is too big and not fitting correctly, I would take it to the grinder to grind it until it would fit. But if it was too small and wouldn't hold into the lead channels, then you'd have to cut an entirely new piece. Fortunately, I don't believe I had to redo a piece this time. And even though a lot of the pieces were slightly on the smaller side, I felt I could get away with it by using the final process, which I'll go over towards the end of the project. Finally, after all the stretching and the cutting and the grinding, we are done. We'll hammer the nails in to hold it all in place, and it's soldering time. Fun fact, if your solder has been sitting out for a while and seems to be oxidized, you can use fine steel wool to scrub it until it looks shiny and new again. And this will help the solder flow better with the iron and flux. To complete this front side, I soldered all the joints together one by one using flux and a dab of solder on each joint. The strength of the panel is essentially the bond between all the solder joints holding the glass 
and the lead came in place. The hardest part about this step is that I feel you only get one shot to get the soldering correct. Unlike the copper foil method where you can run over the solder lines again and again, your solder placement on lead came is final and if misplaced or it overflows, it will all show and you can't really take back the solder once applied. You can start with a small dab first, then add more solder to fill the joints. But you don't want to overdo it to where it becomes too blobby per joint. So just a few more spots to solder. And we're done with this side. Oh, I forgot. I gotta clean this thing first. Let's lift this thing up. You ready? Oh, please. So glad we'll come back and do this side. Let's take a break. So same thing on the back side. Add some hoops for hanging and our soldering is all done. Alright, we are done with the soldering of the panels. Checked all the spots. Everything looks good. Super happy about that. Next up, I want to do some cementing of these pieces. We want to put some putty in there to kind of seal the glass pieces up. Some of them are kind of rattly and I just want to make sure that they don't move around. But also, it'll be waterproof weatherproof and so I think that's a good idea. The only thing is I have this old container that's just kind of been sitting so we need to get a new one. There is this one place, this glass shop that I just found really close by so we're just gonna bike over there. Hopefully they've got some supplies, pick up some putty and jump rings and some chains. Let's go for a bike ride. to see if you have supplies. I'm looking for something like this. No, I make my own. You know what you can do is you can add a little linseed oil to it. I mean, it gets a little messy, yeah. but it'll soften it up so that you can actually put it in. Just doing his own custom work. I'm gonna head back home. We'll have to rethink our strategy today. Just trying to pick up an order. Now, applying the putty is pretty easy. Just fill it all in between all the glass and lead. This is kind of a fun and messy step, so cover up your table pretty well here. The putty or cement will provide the sealing properties as well as bonding the glass to the lead so there won't be any more rattling. Whiting is added to the entire panel to start the drying or setting process. It also helps clean up the panel and naturally darkens the lead game. Lastly, we can shine it up with a soft polishing brush, add some chains for hanging, and this panel is finally complete. Good morning guys, today we're heading over to Track 7 Brewing Company and we're gonna drop this off and deliver the panel. Ah uh, yes, once again, another beer panel commission is fully complete. After weeks and weeks on this project, it's such a joy to see it through and finally delivered. We've already started talking about the next commission, so stay tuned for that. If you remember from last time we made the first commission panel with them, I couldn't help myself and had to get them both out to see them side by side. They just look so good together and honestly perfect in this hot Sacramento sun. I want to thank you guys for coming along with me on this awesome journey into making this stained glass panel. I'm also grateful to be able to work on something cool like this. So a huge thank you to Track 7 for this amazing commission. If you'd like to learn more about making stained glass for yourself, please check out stainedglassdiy.com for tutorials, beginner kits, and more. By the way, these two panels should be on display at Track 7 Brewing Company at their Natomas location. So if you get a chance to visit, do go see the panels for yourself. Thanks again for watching, guys. I will see you in another video.